Take a look at these two images. Both of these were taken by myself earlier today using just my iPhone 10, but they could have been taken with any current smartphone. Now in this video, what I wanna do is take you behind the scenes and show you how I took the images, and I've got a whole heap of tips and tricks to share with you so you can take amazing food photos with just a smartphone. Now make sure you also stick around to the end of the video because I'm also gonna walk you through my editing process. Again, it's all done on my phone, and this allows me to take my images from this to this. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and I do occasional gear reviews as well. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now this video is about taking amazing food photos just with a smartphone. You don't have to have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And the reason I'm putting this video out is because just a few days ago, I set a photography challenge to my viewers here on YouTube to take amazing photos of food and drink. This is a weekly challenge designed to encourage people to take photos, even though we're all locked down safely at home, avoiding the coronavirus. This is called the Self-Isolation Photography Challenge. Challenge. I've done a separate video on it. I'll put a link up here and for more details if you want to join in it's free I'll put a link in the description below this video now It's just week one this week's theme is food and drink and we've already had some amazing images submitted So thank you for everyone that's getting involved Right this video as I said is about food photography of a smartphone. Let's get started now my first tip is about composition, which is incredibly important. A well-composed image will capture the attention and engage the viewer. For my first image, I wanted to start real simple, so I went for a single shot of a strawberry. Now a good composition tip is to fill the frame with your subject. So after arranging the strawberry and trying my best to make it look really nice, I got in very tight with the phone. I went for an overhead shot. It's a very simple composition that works particularly well as a square crop. Now the cutting board makes for a nice rustic background and the blue of the bowl nicely frames the subject. Now here's the image unedited and let's take a look at the edited version. And if you like the look of this, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how I did this. Now for my second image, I wanted to be a bit more adventurous and go from shooting a single strawberry to shooting a bowl of fruit. Now, um, the kitchen roll here is helping me disguise the fact that I didn't actually have a lot of fruit to, uh, to work with. And once again, I'm going through the overhead viewpoint. Now notice here how I'm tapping on the screen. This is how you get the camera to focus. Now when you're taking a picture with an iPhone or any camera for that matter, it's really important that the camera focuses on your subject. So you wanna be able to tell the camera where the subject is and what you want it to focus on. You don't want the camera making an assumption and focusing on what it thinks the subject is. So with an iPhone, all you gotta do is tap on the screen to focus. It's very, very simple. Now you'll see in this clip that I'm actually holding the camera with two hands. That's for stability. If your camera is unsteady when you take a picture, you can get camera shake and that makes your picture look blurry. Now you'll also notice that I'm pressing the shutter button to take the picture. Just like on a proper camera, you can press the shutter button, it takes a picture, and that way you can use two hands for stability. Sharper images. Now I was really pleased with the way the images were turning out, but I wanted to get even more creative. So here I've changed the background by using some color card that I borrowed from my daughter's art box. Now I really love the yellow background, but what's your favorite color? Let me know in the comments below the video. Now let's talk about controlling exposure with the iPhone. Now I think one of the best iPhone photography tips ever is adjusting exposure. To do this, you simply tap to focus, then swipe a finger up and down the screen to make your image brighter or darker. Now if you didn't already know this one, this is gonna completely change the way you take photos with your iPhone. As well as focusing, the quality of light can have a big impact on your images. I was shooting in my kitchen in the afternoon when the light's pretty good. So try shooting at different times of the day or simply moving your subject into better light. Notice here how the line looks much better as I move it to the right of the frame because in this position it captures the light from the window. 
Now for my final image, in an effort to be even more creative, I wanted to take a picture of sugar falling onto a single strawberry. Now there's nothing original about this. In fact, if you Google sugar falling on strawberry, you're gonna see lots of examples. Now, I thought this would be fun to do, and as we've got strawberries and we've got some sugar, and photography should be fun, we set to it. So using the color card once again as a background and my daughter assisting, we gave it a go. It was a lot of fun, but a bit messy. Oh, completely missed it. Go back and get some more. Ow, that was so bad. That was so bad. Go. Go. Well, it could be the one. Now my tip here is to use the camera's continuous shooting mode. If you hold the volume button down when you're taking a picture, instead of taking a single image, it will take a burst of photos. Now this is fantastic when you're shooting moving subjects. So great for kids, pets, sports, and in our case, sugar falling on a strawberry. So I had a fun time taking photos of my iPhone and these are some of my favorite images. Now these images have all been edited using an app called Snapseed. This app is free, it doesn't cost anything. And as promised, I'm now gonna take you through my editing process. Remember, this is all done on the iPhone. Okay, so I've opened Snapseed and we're gonna start by editing this strawberry image, which was one of the first photos I took on the day. Um, it's a nice enough image, but I think it could definitely do with a little bit of improvement. So the basic layout for Snapseed is pretty simple. You've got looks, tools, and export. Export, of course, is for when we're finished with the edit. Um, looks, basically, is a series of filters, very similar to Instagram filters, so you can apply an instant look to your photo if you want, but for me, Tools is the place to go. Now the tools menu is pretty comprehensive and I'm certainly not gonna show you all of these in this video because we would be here for a long time. I'm just gonna show you some of my favorites. Now I usually start with tune image. Once you've selected one of the tools, you have a menu system and this is very simple. You scroll up and down for the menu and to make a change, you scroll left to right. So for example, if I wanna change the brightness and I scroll with my finger to the left of the screen, I can reduce the brightness but if I uh, scroll to the right, I can increase the brightness. And the bar along the top of the screen gives you an idea of how far or how much you've applied that particular look. Um, I don't want to change the brightness on this, I'm just demonstrating, so I'm going to put it back to zero. But one thing I do want to do is just change the ambience. Now ambience affects the tones and the shadows. Uh, if I increase it, you'll see the image looks a lot warmer. It lifts the shadows a little bit. If I decrease it, it makes the image look a bit darker and a bit flat. I'm just going to increase the ambience just a touch. That's pretty much all I need there. Now if I wasn't happy with this change, I would click on the cross. But if you're happy with the change, you click on the tick and that has applied the change. You can always check on your progress by tapping the screen. This is the before and after, so not a massive change so far. Back to tools, and the next one we're gonna look at is details. This is all about sharpening. There's only the two options here in the menu, sharpening and structure. Sharpening does exactly what it says, but the one that I'm gonna use here is structure. Structure is particularly good at bringing out detail and um, emphasizing textures. So here we've got a wood background, a uh, chopping board, and what this will do is it will really bring out the detail here. So I've chosen structure from the menu, and again, to increase, I just scroll my finger to the right like this, and you can see what it's doing. If I go to the left, it will decrease, it'll make everything look really soft, but I really like the structure tool, so I'm just gonna increase this a tiny bit. And I think that looks pretty good, so once again, tick. This is our starting image, and this is our edit so far. It's really looking nice now. It's really enhanced the grain in the background. Back to tools, and the next thing we're gonna look at is crop. Now for this image, I think a square crop would look really nice. There are lots of different uh, templates and options that you can choose from if you wish, but I'm gonna choose square. I can grab a corner and resize the square if I want. I can move it around. It's all pretty straightforward. And uh, all I've gotta do is line it up, and then once I'm pretty happy with that, I click on the tick, and there's my crop. So again, starting image, edit so far. Now click on tools once again, and the next thing I'm gonna do is add a vignette. Now vignette is a photographer's term that applies to darkening of the corners. So the idea is that you darken the corners of the image so it draws the attention and the eye to the middle. And you'll see a blue dot appears in the middle. If I move the dot around, you'll see the circle, and the circle I can resize. Now what I can do, once I've chosen and moved my circle into position, is I can affect the brightness 
inside and outside the circle. So once again, up and down for the menu, I'm gonna select outer brightness, and I'm gonna reduce the outer brightness by moving my finger, sliding my finger to the left. You know, that's a little bit over the top, I'm just showing you. I'm just gonna increase this a tiny bit. I can adjust the size of the circle if I wish. I think that's pretty good. Click on the tick. And again, that's our starting image and that's our edit so far. So the vignette has just darkened the corners of the edge or the edges of the image and it helps to draw the eye and the attention to the middle. Um, I think I'm pretty much done here. I'm just gonna show you one more tool. Um, click on tools, click on healing. This is really good at removing things from an image. It's not perfect, doesn't work for everything, but there's a little black dot here. Um, it's not really bothering me, but I'll show you how it works. Just tap and it's gone. Um, pretty straightforward, down the bottom of the image here, there's a white dot, I'm gonna tap on that, and that's now gone. It's pretty good and very, very easy and intuitive to use. Click on tick, so there's my image. Once again, there's the starting image, there's the edit so far, and I'm really happy. Now, before I export the image, I wanna show you one more thing, which is really cool. I'm gonna click on this little icon at the top, click on view edits, and you'll see now a stack of edits. These are the steps that I went through. I started with my original image. I went to tune image, uh, adjusted the sharpness with the details, crop, vignette, and finally healing tool. I gave you a little demo on that. If I wanted to go back and change the crop, I can tap on this twice and I can either readjust or delete the crop entirely. So the nice thing about this program is you can effectively go back in time and redo things that you might have done earlier in the edit and I think that's pretty neat. Once you've made a change you just re-tap to bring in all the different layers again, tap on the arrow and we're back to our finished image which of course I'm now going to export. So I click on export, three different options. I always choose the bottom one which is export. This creates a JPEG with permanent changes but leaves your original image alone. And that's done. Now don't go away, because I've got one more edit to show you. So for my second edit, I've opened up this image of a line, which I think is quite nice. It's a nice, simple composition, but the image does look a little bit flat. I really want to enhance this orange color, and I want to make the line pop a little bit more, bring out the details. So once again, I go to Tools, and Tune Image is always a good place to start. Um, now there's a few different things I can do here. I can go to Saturation and increase the saturation. You can see straight away that's going to make the orange really pop. Um, if I go to Ambience, that will do a similar thing, but it will also help to lift some of the details in the texture on the wood as well. So I'm actually just gonna increase the ambience a little bit to start with. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm also gonna go to the shadows because what you can do here with this program uh, in the Tune Image menu is you can adjust the highlights and the shadows independently. So um, if I go to shadows and increase the shadows, I should be able to lift some of the detail over here to the right of the line. So. Um, scroll to the right and you'll see this area lifts. If I go back, you can see quite clearly. It's just lifting the shadows. I don't want to get rid of the shadows completely. I just want to reveal some of the detail here. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm going to click on the tick icon. Um, next thing I'm going to do is go back to tools and bring out the detail in the image. Because I think there's a lot of detail here which isn't really showing. So uh, once again, just like the last edit, I'm going to go to structure and I'm going to go to the right and you'll see this has really enhanced the detail on the line here. So tap here to show you the before and after, and this is already looking pretty good. Press the tick. Now next I wanna show you the lens blur effect. This uh, image I don't think needs this particular effect, but I just wanna show it to you. Um, lens blur is pretty cool. You can go for a circular blur, or you can go for an elliptical blur. I'm gonna go for the circular blur. You can move this around. You can resize to fit. So I'm resizing it to fit this lime here. And what it will do is the, um, the inside circle will be where your sharpest part of the image will be. Everything outside will be blurry. And the inner circle is the transition between the sharp area and the blurry area. Now once you've uh, positioned your circle, all you've got to do is choose from the menu. I'm going to choose blur strength. And I'm going to push it really hard so you can see this effect. Now if I go to the right like so you can see it's affected everything outside the circle is really blurry and then there's a nice transition to the middle of the frame now clearly that's over the top I just wanted to show you how it works so I'm going to reduce the blur in fact I don't want to apply blur to this image at all so I'm just going to go to the cross but I wanted to show you that tool really quickly this image is pretty much done but I just want to go back and revisit 
um, tune image because I just want to make that uh, orange a little bit more brighter so so I'm going to go to saturation and just increase the saturation just a touch I think that looks great click on the tick so this is our starting image this is our edit so far just to finish this off nice little touch I'm going to go to tools bottom right choose a frame I can resize this frame I think that really adds a nice finishing touch to the image I can select different frames there's black frames there's um like old school film type frames they're all pretty nice I'm just going to go for the plain white again like everything else you can customize these um, and I think that looks pretty good so click on tick I am done here that's my starting image that's my edit of course the last thing we do is export so as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of Snapseed. If you're on the go, it's the perfect app for editing your images. It works on the iPhone, it works on the iPad, it's available for Android, and it is a free app. It doesn't cost you anything. For more details, check out the links below this video. Now don't forget the Photo Genius Photo Challenge is open to everyone. I'd love you guys to get on board. So check out the details on the Photo Genius website. I'll put a link below the video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye. Yeah.